Right, new video today to help explain the Solo Air suspension, a bit of a backstory about it, where it came from, why we made it, where the ideas came from. So we're sitting here with Mikey and with Mitch. And between us, we're gonna try and explain everything we can do, or all the things we think is important that you know to why we believe this is the air, best air kit on the market and why we came up with the concept of it being like this. You can see here, I'm holding a complete T32 assembly kit here over there next to Mikey is a full T26, T28, T30 setup. Mitch there has the rear bags and various of the bits which we'll run you through along the way and explain how these are quite different to what's already available on the market. So a bit of a story about where the whole concept came from. So the Solo Coilover has been going for, Mikey? Four, four years, four or five years. Four or five years, yes. And that came from the idea that Bilstone came to us and said, let's make a lower coilover lower than it was available on the market. We were already had a reputation for making vehicles lower and we bagged some vehicles with other air suspension kits, but we wanted to make something that was, the goal was a super low coilover that could be run really low, but also could be run at a sensible, achievable height, but also most importantly, it was comfortable, gave ride quality and was well built. So a combination of Bill Stein's knowledge and development in coilovers and our ability to work on getting things low and also a lot of to and fro and backwards and forwards and testing the final solo of a coiler was produced and ever since then it's just the success has been huge sold no end of them and the kind of the success from that damper then as a coilover was then used by other people to make an air kit so from there the solo damper which is exactly the same as you see here without the bag on was the original coilover version the guys at lowdown transporters took this damper and they produced an air kit with it and they'd done it in the same way that everybody else had done with a contact bag and various other bits we'll go through it a bit more detail and produce an air kit from there it was really successful but we'd I'd been over in Holland, uh, Transport HQ Europe, and I'd been I'd had a meeting with a guy called Heiss from a company called well, BNHF Bonhoff. Heiss Bonhoff is his name, and he was explaining to me the system that he did over there. He already has a bag kit that was successful in the Netherlands or throughout Europe, which was a similar concept to this using a Coney damper. Seemed a great system, and I tried that damper in our Dutch van, in Marco's van, and it was surprised by how comfortable it was. Um, but there, that setup wasn't really quite low enough for what people want in the UK. So a combination of what Heist had already done, a combination of what we knew, a combination of what Lowdown did, the damper that we already had that we knew was super success successful, super comfortable, we set about making what we believe is the best air suspension possible for a Volkswagen Transporter. So how do we make the successful coilover into an air suspension kit? Well, it's relatively easy in the fact that the product was always there. The front damper we already knew was a perfect length, but the rear dampers needed to be shorter to get the drop we wanted to. So Mikey? Yeah. So it's pretty much modeled off our solo coilover damper. In fact, it's probably right the same, would you say? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. But it was a little bit before we started designing the kit, actually, we had a call for shorter rear shots for the guys going extra low static. Um, and low down uh, with the kit that we mentioned earlier on. So it's the optimum actually for airing out, lift, drop, everything like that for our kit. So it's, it works um, hand in hand with the bags. So from there, the dampers were already in place. We'd got the correct measurements for the rear damper. So now we set about making a bag kit and the bag plates for the front and the rear. So first port of call was um, speak to Heiss uh, and he sent us the first prototype of his bag kit to work out how we could make it work with his. I'll hand you over to Mitch now, and he'll explain the difference between the bag system that we've used and what you would see on most of the other air dampers that are out there on the market. The concept bag is quite a thick, dense rubber. This bag here that we're using is a lot softer, a bit thinner, so it's more valuable and a nicer ride. We're using a smaller front bag than what you'd see on the market currently. Uh, this is partly down to that other bag is actually probably too big. It gives issues with wheel clearances, means the tanks then running more. Yeah, great. That's the diameter of the bags all, all bang on now. So um, width wise, wheel wise, it's plenty of clearance. It also lifts to the exact points that, that we'd want it to. So the, the shock travel is moving when it aired out. It's all the, it's the shocks bottoming out perfectly or just before bottoming out, not causing any damage. And then um, lift, the bag would lift on that shock exactly to the top point so where there's some other bags can extend really really far and that's great that's great for their uses but um it's you're not using your full potential every bag you're, you're using a bag that's incorrect for the job so these are absolutely where they'd want to be i'd say so what we've noticed and we've all had vehicles on air lots of vehicles on air but there's a sweet spot with air so a lot of people think air suspension is just automatically comfortable 
And yes, that's true and it's set right, but solid air is really hard and really firm. If you've got too much air in your bag, the ride's too hard because you're sitting on a rock hard bag of air. If you've not got enough in your bag, ride quality can be really squishy and a bit too soft. So with this side bag, it allows us to run the perfect, what I would class the sweet spot PSI to make the vehicle ride comfortably. And with us having the same size front and rear bag, it means that pretty much your pressures in your front and rear bag are almost identical depending on how much weight's in your vehicle. Going back, Mikey, to when we, we loaded that the Dutch van up to go back to Poland, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. And we would we built it, we loaded up a load of stuff to take back there, and Mikey was sitting inside and I was going around making the measurements and he was tweaking up each corner of the van to get it the ride to sit um, level all the way through. And once we'd done it, Mikey was like, come look at the controller. <laughs> the controller was like, yeah, the controller was, each PSI was exactly the same. Now, that, I'm not going to say that's going to happen every single time because it very much depends about what weight you carry in the back. But the idea that the bags are all the same, therefore the pressures you should be very similar means that you don't have that kind of bouncy ride that you see with some of, some suspension kits where they have to use a smaller bag in the rear. So to allow for all that extra weight, they have to have more pressure in them, which makes the ride really firm. Yeah, I was going to say, because campers are heavier at the back, so we're seeing a lot of these kits have smaller bags on the back and bigger on the front. There's, you know, most cars that have a heavier engine, but they don't. Bands are, you know, all the weight is, or 70% of the weight is at the mm -hmm. back. Yeah. This is going to, you know, it's what Xeno is, isn't it? Yeah. People have got, you know, their 30 PSI on the back and... Yeah, different on the front, you know, it's just not, it's just not working. It's just and this was the bag that Heist was really keen to use. It's a European made bag, whereas the Contitech stuff generally comes from China. Not that that's a bad thing, but it just, we didn't think the Contitech bag was the right, the perfect setup, if you like, for a transporter, whereas what we tried with this worked really well. The narrowness of the bag allowed us to have the same size bag plate as the bag. Mitch? Um, yeah, so basically we're running the same size bag ring and plates as the bag. This is down to spread of the load on the bag, so it just kind of, it's, it makes the bag actually perform as it should. If you're running a smaller bag plate, it's sort of fighting against it, the bag can roll over, which means you're not actually benefiting from the full spin rate of the bag. Exactly that, it's, you know, you're not, you're not doing that. It's also, if it rolls over, if it rolls over the edge, you like, you know, that's that's not a fixed point anymore. So that, if that bag rolls over and it's flexible, you're closer to your tire because it's rolling over the edge, rolling over the edge, so it prevents any any risk of, of wearing through that. But mm. I'll say as well, we've seen that a couple of times yeah. in the past on, on certain kits, but you know, it's, it seems seems to be the one, but also bag, we keep saying bag, we, we use this all the time, bag, but it's uh, air spring, some that's people know it as air spring, just because it doesn't, depends what, if you're from, you know, buses have air springs and that's, if you know, is that, that's what it is. So the other thing that we liked a lot about this bag compared to what you would see with the other bags that are used on the market is this here. Girdle ring. Yeah. Girdle ring, yes. <laughs> so Mitch, explain this and why that's okay, a benefit. So this girdle ring is not, built into the bag, it is installed after the bags are manufactured. So we actually install the girdle ring onto the bag. That means it's a serviceable item. I've seen over the years, after you know, certain kits have been on the market for a while, they've been used on the cars, uh, and you've seen this ring, which is commonly made of uh, metal bands, it actually splits open, which then causes the bag to fail. So we wanted to go with a narrower bag, but the plates that match the bag. Now, what you tend to find is on some of the other air suspensions, they have an issue with if you're running a certain offset of wheel or a certain width of wheel, that the bag plate here can rub on the underside of the, on the top of the tire. We decided to do this differently, Mitch. Okay, so if we look at our lower bag plate here, it's, you know, it's a good gap from the um, roll bar mount or the drop link mount. If we look at the old low down kit, they would both mount like that. So we've got a load more clearance because we've actually thought about how the damper works, the drop of the um, bag or bellow, and then calculated how high we can actually go to increase wheel clearances. This is because of the small bag as well, isn't it? Yeah. You've got a smaller squash on the bag. So going to the previous point, the, the bag squash is a lot smaller, which, which means we can gain gain more room for wheel clearances. Most, most fans out there are, are trying to keep as highly low rated tire as possible so we found that that was a that was a, a must really in, in, in the design right really importantly it also needed to look good actually, actually it's not that important but we wanted it to look good so we kind of wanted to keep the theme through solo has this this uh, vivid blue color we wanted to carry on so the whole system the whole setup is either black or um, anodized black or anodized blue to match the solo band here 
This wrist, this here is actually a wristband. There you go, but that's uh, bright blue, which kind of keeps the consistency all the way through. We've also gone for, Mikey, you have one there. Black braided lines, so the lead lines that go onto the struts themselves. These go onto the back of the, the front struts. So on the back of the front struts, of the, the front struts move. So as they're moving around, um, nylon lines would over time perish, break, crack, or could kink. And then there is other companies out there who use the same braided lines, but they're theirs are silver, but obviously in a, in a black wheel arch, they stand out like a sore thumb. So again, Andy says, aesthetics are quite important. So we, we thought of everything we possibly could to, to make it look as sleek and at the end as possible. So there's a limit to how low you can go with an air suspension. We could make this all lower, we could make this bag plate seat even lower, but it's pointless because there's only so far you can go until your vehicle starts fouling on your wheel. But the important thing about this setup is that the as Mikey mentioned earlier, the final squash is considerably lower than the other bags that are on the market, which allows us then to make this sit higher to give you that sweet spot. You're riding in the best part of the heuristic compression, you've got the best pier side in the bag, and you've not got any issues or concerns with this plate here rubbing on your tyre. So the development of this has been a long, slow process really, because we wanted to get it 100% right, and we've made various tweaks along the way. The first one, I think, went on my T6.1, which was a combination of the kit that we got from Heiss, from Bonhoff, um, with the solo damper, and then we'd made tweaks along the way. We did wheel pros van? Pros, yeah, 40 winks. We made a couple more small, only small changes. Yeah, to their docker. And then the final version, furnished, finished version, went on the... Yeah. The Navis um, preface lift Dutch van, which went over there, which we then drove to Holland, did we? Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. So I've had almost the final version with a few tweaks on my van now for probably six months, and honestly, the most comfortable bag kit I've ever had. I know we're going to say it because it's ours, but it is the best that I've tried on the market. You've had loads. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've had loads. And you've been through a lot of brands. Yeah, you've gone through it. Yeah. I'm an air suspension whore. <laughs> Pillar to post, is yeah. Build a van, get bored of it, sell it, build another one. Leave the air suspension on start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of the ride is down to that bag that we're now using that's softer. Yeah. I've always found the other kits out there are a little bit harsh, mm -hmm. um, especially obviously on the road that we're on. Mm -hmm. um, but this kit doesn't try and break you back. We have the best road in the world, don't we, to test any vehicle on the best. way to Any of that's been to transport. Well, well it's not best. Yeah. It depends which, which side of the coin you're looking at. Yeah, I suppose. The best to test, but the worst to drive. So that, yeah. I don't know, that one mile on the way down to this industrial estate is awful. It's the most rutted, vile road. You can go up and down, can't you? Whenever we have any low-down barbecues here, there's scrape marks in the tarmac from the guys with the air cords. that just yeah. sumps. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a great way to test it, but I can hit those things flat out and not have to worry about it. So as the revisions and the development went on, the guys at Lowdown asked us whether we could so they'd previously already done like a stealth bag and smaller rear bag. So some of people that are even crazier than us like to try and tuck 18s. We can tuck an 18, I think. Tuck like, an 18, yeah. yeah. It's mental, isn't it? So there is a, a lowdown down asks us whether we could develop exclusively for them a prototype stealth rear bag, as it's called. So it's not something that's available from us, from Transport HQ or Solo. It's something that's only available direct from lowdown, and that is so you have some 3d printed pieces there yeah mitch 3d printed some plates for us obviously this is our current rear bag the fitting comes out the side here as you can probably see from there the fitting comes out of the bottom so it comes out of the bottom swing arm again the lead lines I mentioned earlier on screw into it like so and then they come through the rear arm so that's again preventing any wear that you're going to get um, and these are considerably lower i mean Side by side, they don't look massive amount lower, but they they are a good inch lower once they're on the vehicle. Because um, I mean, a mill here is a mill and a half outboard, so it's a nice uh, equation we like to use to to get some lows. But yeah, that's that's what we made for solo uh, for low down. Sorry, basically. Just to confirm, though, they're not three D printed. They're not three D. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The final item, they were three D printed. So we three D printed, printed good, but. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it will be a final copy. This is, uh, we have our made, made sure it's finally low down, and then we've done billet versions and we've sent them to them and they're being tested on. That low T5, is it? Matt Kendricks. Matt Kendricks, yeah. Is yeah. It that low T5 on Instagram? Yeah. 
We'll plug him anyway. It's a cool van. Look at the yeah, look at the van. Yeah, it's still in top. Probably one of our favourites, not favourite at the moment. So. But that's the beauty of us, and a lot of this has been done with three D printers. Love three D printers here. Lots of, lots of, gives us the opportunity to do lots of testing, development, and measurement. So before we we get the final production version done, so they're just the three D printed versions. The final samples um, were on Matt's van work perfectly so now they're in production so when the next lot of bag plates come they'll be available like i said exclusively from lowdown if you want the stealth rear bag kit so mikey has a complete damper there so t26 t28 t30 everybody just refers to it as a t30 damper but that's a full complete t30 damper there and he will just run you through top to bottom what it is you get so what you get what is in, included in the kit you've got your top top bearing it doesn't look like there's a bearing but there is underneath that is a bearing so you, you only use your rubber top hat you don't use any of your standard bearing when you uh, when you're going onto an air kit you just use that rubber top man change the bearings so these are thrust bearings a lot of the bearings on the market there are a lot of kits on the market use a roller um use the ball roller thrust bearing um, we've decided to change it and go for a needle bearing. Needle bearings are stronger, they spread the weight a lot more, so we've gone barrel bearings, needle bearings. Um, these are also slimmer, so not only do they gain as lows if we needed the lows, it means we get uh, more meat in the top, so it's a stronger, a stronger bearing cap. So this is the bearing cap on the top, it means you get uh, more room in there, it means we've got a, uh, an o-ring in there just to keep out dust and stuff, but it means we've got a slightly thicker one in. And the same size one, I believe, was it Mitch that's in the top of the bag? The yes. O-rings, yep. sorry. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, again, going back to serviceability earlier on, if you're servicing it, you're not going to find a load of different size uh, O-rings as we've seen in the past. But we shouldn't need to be using a Nontrail 7.2, which is the strongest, best O-ring for the job on this. Um, so you've got one in there and, and two in the top of the bag to prevent any, uh, any air from escaping. But yeah, all of that is serviceable from us. But, you shouldn't need to, we don't plan on ever needing them. Again, that's just the top of the bag. Um, the blue, the lovely blue anodized bits that Andy said earlier on, preventing the aluminium from getting any corrosion or anything. In the top, we've got um, stainless Torx bolt screws. Um, stainless is obviously gonna prevent any terrible weather, salts and stuff from corroding it. And Torx being, you can get more torque on them, and less like to round than Allen keys, as we we often see kits use Allen keys. And um, they are a bit more expensive, but it's worth it just for the longevity. And they look a lot more OEM. VW use a lot more Torx than they do Allen keys, so you know OEM we like we like it factory looking and, and as as good as it can be. So moving on from there, we've discussed the bag quite a lot already. We know everything we need to about that. You can see there quite clearly how the bag and the bag plates are all virtually the same size. Over on the rear, Mitch has got a rear bag with him there. So same bag as before, obviously different bag plates for its placement, but again, same width. Those plates are the same width as the yeah, others? Exactly yeah, the same. all the same. Yeah, it works on everything as well, doesn't it? We had to manage, make sure that it worked with four motions as well mm -hmm. as two wheel drives. Um, so there's no bag rubbing or anything like that at all. It all holds in and yeah, it works on both. So that's the strut and the bag and the kit explained. So they're available now or available from us. They're available from various different dealers across the country. But this kit now is ready to go and available to be purchased for and installed at various places across the country. As I mentioned previously, Solo have quite a big range now of other products which tie in with these. So we have always been known for the Solo coilovers. We have a whole new range of Solo coilovers coming, which I'll go to in a second. But Sticking with the air theme for now, we'll just run you through a few other products that we already do, which are part of the Solo brand. So, Mikey, tank there. Do you want to explain the tank? First of the sides and salads. Yeah. We've got the seamless air tank. The seamless air tanks, they're a great tank. This is a three gallon, some people call it four gallon, but it's a three gallon. These are great, the seamless, which is getting out of strap, we'll probably show you. Um, these can be mounted anywhere, really. This, the straps can be uh, they can start the cross, they can spin around. Um, it just means, again, flexible. You can mount them wherever you want. Most people have got a full camper and they don't want to use up all the cupboard space. So underneath, we mount them underneath in front of the spare wheel. So they just fit in there and you're not losing any room at all. Most seamless tanks have ports on both sides symmetrically. We've not gone for that actually. We've gone for three on the one side. Um, when you're putting these underneath, the exhaust runs down one side. You want to keep your air lines up far away from the exhaust as possible. So we've gone for all in one side to keep them away from the exhaust. So as much as we've, this tank would work in any. Work in any vehicle, vehicle inside, yeah. outside, yeah. We've very much designed the way the ports are 
specifically for a transporter just to make it better, safer, easier to install. Yeah, and the aluminium as well, which means we see a lot of, well, there used to be a lot of steel tanks. Uh, you get moisture in your system, it corrodes the tanks from inside out, I mean, and you get all in your solenoids, you've cleaned plenty of solenoids and <laughs> things like that in your time, you <laughs> much have. And yeah, this just prevents anything like that. Finished in black, textured black powder coat, nice and strong powder coat. Also means that it's not bright, you do, someone's not gonna sit behind a car and think, that bomb and the new what is that? But it's yeah, it's nice in the hidden away black tank, and it looks like it's meant to be there. Another good thing about the tank is with these straps, you can have the tank rotate sort of wherever you want it for the position, and that's to get the drain pores at the bottom. You find that a lot of tanks that are used, they've got like fixed feet on them. So when you mount them under a van, the drain port's actually the top. When you want to drain all the moisture out of your tank that collects at the bottom of the tank, you then can't. It's just going to still be in the tank when you've exhausted all the pressure in the tank. So these are, I guess, great to allow all the moisture to come out when you drain your tank. Yeah, I mean, very much transport is in mind in all the development for this. Um, you know, Dan's picking the bag and the way the tanks are made, but th these are the bits working at any purpose. We sell those tanks to people that put them in various other vehicles, golfs, whatever they're bagging, and the compressors as well. I mean, they uh, a compressor that's exclusively ours, although we sell it to many dealers, but that compressor is used in many different platforms, BMWs, whatever, but this compressor, has been really popular for us. People questioned it, I think, initially, because it was something they're a bit unsure of or they hadn't heard of, but I think we've sold hundreds. It's this whole thing about how everyone had to have buy air, otherwise yeah. it wasn't going to be right. Proofs in it, putting out big reviews, the, yeah. new, the new one, the R1, and it's and it's just taken off, really. And yeah, it's two bad cars I've had, I've used those, and mm. they weren't transporters, they weren't mm. cars. And they're just cracking bits of kit, and we can't get quick enough at the moment. No, uh, we'd all, I mean, I'd previously only had Via compressors, and it was their brand that everybody said you must use, and I'm not saying they're not, but one of the things that drove me wild was when I would leave my house in the morning and I'd air up, because I was a sad git that would air out every time I parked on my drive. Now, I'd be like heading off to the gym at quarter to six in the morning, and I could see my neighbours like opening the windows going, what's that horrendous noise vibrating outside my door and it was that my compressors and my vans airing up in a big echoey box that it is so we set about trying to find a, a quieter or as quiet as possible alternative i would previously been had issues with cvt and that just didn't work for me so we were looking for another direction so when we tracked down and found this compressor we were shocked weren't we i think what was the first thing you fit in was it the flatbed Flatbed, yeah, we've got yeah. done a video actually, and I yeah. think it was a genuine reaction where I yeah. said, "Come and listen to this. This is actually on, and it was under the seat, and you couldn't hear it." So. Yeah, Mikey was like, "Come in to listen to this. I fit these compressors," and yeah. I was like, "Here we go." Thinking he was going to say they're awful, they're really loud, but he was like, "Listen, they're running, and they're so quiet. They're not silent. We can't say they're silent, but they are so much quieter." I'm not. I'm kind of aware of them inside my van, but not like like a via. You kind of have to go, "Oh, what's that?" There's a little rumble. Yeah, oh, that's the compressors. You so, can feel the vibration a little bit on, yeah. in, your, in your van. But normally, like, if you're outside the van and the engine's running, you can't hear the compressors. No. People don't believe us here. People that have had vans on air and they come and they listen to our vans. Gav came and, over, didn't they, yeah, from exactly. uh, no, that no. line. Oh, yeah, I couldn't believe it. So this is the Solo SHH. So everything tends to have three letters. So this is the Solo AIR. The Solo compressors are called the SHH. So the, sh the Solo TNK tank all the coilovers which we'll go through in a minute of all the same theme pretty much three letters in everything one more point worth mentioning on the compressors is they're the perfect size to fit underneath transporters mm -hmm. so we mount them outside again like you said earlier on and they fit perfectly there's just sort of two boxes or three boxes underneath transporter that sort of size um under the passenger uh, under the driver's side if there was a step there like a combi van um they fit perfectly in there so they mount well out of the way again not taking up any more room and they fill just as fast, if not faster than the others. And regardless of what anybody says, we've tried them all. There's people that claim there are quieter compressors on the market. That is the quietest compressor on the market, bar none. And I don't know how many we've sold now, but warranty claims, straight up honest. We had one, maybe? One, I think, yeah. We had one warranty claim out of, I don't know, thousand odd, probably sold now. So really, really good compressors and good value as well. They're considerably cheaper than alternatives that are available on the market. Keeping them in stock is the hardest thing at the minute because the factory can't necessarily build them as quick as we need them, but um, yeah. Great bit of kit. So compressors we've covered. Yeah, uh, yeah. we've got the drop links as well. Ah, yeah. Yes, so something that gets spoken about quite a lot when you're putting vehicles on air are, in fact, when you lower vehicles, people talk about drop links. The amount of times I see posted on Facebook groups I've loaded my van on B14s, do I need longer drop links or adjustable drop links or, you know, anything, or I've put 30 mil springs, do I need longer drop links? 
The simple answer is no. Firstly, never use adjustable drop links because they will create a lot knock. They're terrible. It's just not the way to go. But the correct size drop link, you do not need a longer drop link unless, unless you've got a T6.1, then you need T6.1 dedicated longer drop links, which we have in stock for coilovers. Yeah, but if you're going air suspension, you only need these length drop links if you're going really low on air, don't you? If you had kind of a standard, a lot of other air setups, that didn't have any extra cutting work or weren't particularly low, you wouldn't need longer drop links. But these drop links we've had designed especially, so this is the solo length drop link that Mikey's holding his hand there, which is the solo LNK, I'm guessing. Uh, we've not actually ended up, but yeah, it should be the LNK, shouldn't yeah. it? So that's, that's the, exactly the correct size drop link you would need when you're fitting this suspension to your yeah, it's perfectly measured and measured out just exactly what you need. And they've also got a good two year warranty on them possibly, yes, so. Have. We're trying to keep as much warranty and look after you guys as much as possible. And that's T5 right there through to T6.1. It uses the same length drop link. So talking about warranty, it's the same. This, I think, I believe we're the only people that are doing this, but this whole setup has a two-year warranty. So that everything that you see here, the full air kits, two-year warranty, whereas most of them available on the market or all possibly uh, just one-year warranty. Even then they try and get out of it. <laughs> they do. So Heiss over at Bonhoff or BNHF will be selling this kit as well. This kit will be available from Transport HQ UK, Transport HQ Europe. Heiss has been a big instrumental part of creating this kit and he will be offering this as a part of a setup that he does. So we are in the process of, for all of our products, wanting to set up an authorised dealer network. We don't install air here. We've said it quite a few times. We install air. We're basically product development here and distribution. So we build our own vehicles here but we just don't physically have time to do air installs. So we want to set up an authorised dealer network. The problem is we see a lot of rogue installs on various things that we have here. So we want to try and create a network of people that have learnt to fit it the right way, the correct way, the safe way. So coming in the new year, we're going to be working with getting a bunch of people here, showing them how to do it, or people that already do it, not giving it their way, like, you know, with the oracles, but getting their work checked over by us to make sure we're comfortable where they already install air suspension so we can then suggest and recommend that you go to them so there will be an authorized dealer network the, the, we get so many people ring us and say right i want my suspension fit and they're happy to drive four or five hours away to get it done which doesn't make sense really i'd rather be able to say right whereabouts in the country are you okay contact these guys they'll do as good a job as we do would do and they'll charge you the same because they, they've been taught to do it our way another important thing in this kit and all the solo kit where possible is Eco, we wanted to try and keep it as eco as possible. So Mikey will explain what we've done there. I've just got a bag, it's going to pass me over. Um, all the fittings and stuff like that will be in these. A lot of people use bubble bags, you know, the normal generic bubble wrap. Um, these are all good for the planet. It's got a turtle on there. You know, everything we're doing, we're trying to use paper tape where possible. We're filling them instead of bubble wrap, we're filling them with scrunch paper and recycle. Anything recycled, we're just trying to care as much as we can about the environment, the future. Um, so again, that's just another another great thing we've looked into and spent hours looking for yeah. <laughs> for the product. So it's and it's expensive stuff. Isn't it's it? expensive, you know, it's more recyclable, expensive. Yeah. biodegradable stuff is more expensive. But that was something that was really important to us. So even down to these boxes here, you you will see these are solar coilovers, but obviously cardboard's recyclable. Using paper tape, the fillings inside are all either biodegradable or recyclable wherever possible. The whole kit, we tried to make everything on this kit. You know, we tried to, <laughs> we tried, um, tried to just make everything, the whole process, we tried to follow as many carbon neutral yeah. um, using methods as possible, bags. yeah, and using everything as close to home as we can. So moving on from this, I think that's everything explained on the air kit. Um, now, solo range is growing and growing, so we just wanted to talk to you about, about a few other things briefly. We'll do another video on this coming soon, probably in the new year now, but we've been working behind the scenes on various other versions of coilovers. The original solo coilover will become the solo LOW. We have a new solo coilover coming out, coming out it's called the solo NSL, which stands for not solo or nearly solo, which kind of sits in between slightly above the solo, which is 100 mil at the highest setting. That kind of sits 90 and up from there. We've got the solo NXT, which is next generation, and that's your kind of your average drop coilover, the sort of 75, 50 to 75 mil drop coilover. Uh, and then we have a new solo LFT coilover coming out, which is a complete adjustable lift suspension. So a front and rear adjustable, solo lift kit coming out 
early next year. We knew the solo low coilover was good, and then we were talking to Bill Stein, and we've probably seen on one of our previous videos, we ran solo, uh, we ran Bill Stein B16s on one of the vans, and the beauty of the B16 was it's a fully adjustable dampener. It's got adjustable dampening height and dampening rate, so you could find the sweet spot, you could find the most perfect, comfortable spot in the coilover. And then it got us thinking, well, B16s, the technology involved in them makes them really expensive. I think if Bill Stein ever produced them, they were gonna be like 2,800, 2,900 quid a kit. Well, if we found the sweet spot in that damper, if we found the right point that you never want to adjust, why don't we just make a coilover that has that ride quality? So that's where the new Solo NXT uh, coilover is. It's your standard drop damper, like I said, about 70, 75 mil at its lowest setting. That's going to be coming soon. It's going to be a really popular one. And then we wanted that coilover for that gap in between. So solo lows are too low for some people. Some people want to go lower than solo NXT, so that's where the NSL comes in. So it's that coilover for somebody that wants to sit in between. They're not quite brave enough or don't quite want to go as low as 100 mil, but they want to sit in between. So the NSL comes in there using the same information we've used from the other two kits to create this mid-range kit. But importantly, we're a great believer in when you shorten the spring, you should shorten the damper. So that kit, again, will have a, a the damper on that is in between the low and the NXT. So you've got a shorter damper to go with your short spring to give you that mid-range range kind of low but not quite so low coilover same principle with the lift a longer longer damper longer springs so that kind of completes the coilover range and the one thing that we found was missing was trying to make a spring set so we say it quite a lot but springs only can give you a crashy ride they're a good alternative to a cheap setup but where people go horribly wrong is they go right i want to low i haven't got the budget really to lower my van on coilovers I want to just put springs on it. The problem you've got is when you lower a van on lowering springs and you've got your original damper, the ride can become crashy. So we wanted to set about making something that was as good as you could possibly get spring only with the right drop and comfort. So it had to be IBAC. We contacted IBAC, gave them a brief of what we were looking for. And between us, we've designed this. So this is the new Solo IBAC Pro Sport set. So this gives you about 45 mil drop. And the reason why we've gone 45 mil, anything lower than 45 mil, the danger is we could be so easy to go, oh, so low, we're known for low, let's make a 60, 65 mil spring. Your damper just can't handle that kind of drop, it's too long, so your ride becomes really crashy. So we've gone with 45, this is the optimum drop to notice that you've lowered your vehicle. You lower a vehicle 30 mil and it's hard to even tell you have. 45 is the perfect amount to make it obvious visually that you've lowered the vehicle, but also to improve your ride, your comfort, your body roll, your sway, but also not too low that's gonna make the vehicle uh, uncomfortable in your ride crashy. So a few of the solar bits we do, we do the rear heavy duty spring rubbers when fitting coilovers or springs or anything, it's really common for the rear spring rubbers to uh, wear. So we've created a poly polyurethane, one of those, again, two year warranty, but those things are gonna last forever. But the solo range itself is growing. Merchandise, obviously, loads of that. So this is all based around the transporter platform as we know it, T5 to T6.1. You may have seen on some of our stuff we've been developing for the T7. We get our hands on an ID Buzz. Probably by the time this video has come out, we would have had it for a couple of days to do some testing and development. Our own one has been slightly delayed, but it should be here early new year. So we can start working on suspension for those as well. So just keep watching this space. We'll have something pretty cool and exciting in the whole ID Buzz world if that excites you. And already we're looking at working on the next stage of what replaced the T6.1 and what we can do suspension wise for that. That's it, that finishes this video off. I just wanted to thank Mikey and thank Mitch for being involved and helping me out explain all this stuff because they're the technical guys. I'm just the guy, the old guy that has the ideas and grows the beard. Appreciate you watching. Please do press that like button if you think it's at all interesting. It helps us, it helps YouTube show it to other people. Subscribe to the channel if you find this interesting or you think there's anything else that might be interesting in the transporter world that you think we may want to cover in the future please let us know in the comment below. Share this video with anybody that's about to embark on the journey of lowering their transporter, whether it's air suspension or whether it's just springs. We hope that there's a solo product out there for you. And as always, thanks for watching.